you don't hear anything different until you hear the lyric hit and you're like that wait what vax like, what? <laughs> and then so people people were blown away by yeah, that it's too late like, at that point you're already sucked in you're already dancing like you're already <laughs> in it I'm Asmir Davis. I am founding partner and chief strategy officer at Majority. I'm Omid Farhang, founder and CEO at Majority. My name is Sebastian Urea. I am a director producer and I own a company called Motion Family and Samakan. My name is Ibrahim Ham Yilla. I'm a first AD slash director and um, I work with Motion Family. I'm Jonathan Kirkland, head of marketing and brand for BLK Dating App. Government name, Byron Thomas, but y'all, most of y'all know me by Manny Fresh, Elvis Freshly, Manny Glover, Manny Save Us Jr., and Nary Hurt. Can you first tell me about the aha moment that led to Vax That Thing Up? It actually was part of a project that we were working on with BLK, a black dating app that's owned by Match Group. We were doing a brand campaign refresh for them. And in that process, we were working on what that campaign idea was. We were already working around the vaccination with the White House. We released the Vaxify badge in the app. So we just said to them, you know, if you have any ideas on how we can amplify um, our messaging around helping the community get vaccinated. One thing that we knew is that the Black community overall were reluctant to adopt the, the vaccine for obvious reasons, right? The historical uh, issues that have made them reluctant to take on any sort of medical <laughs> advice from a government in particular that ha doesn't have a, a, a good track record for doing the Black community any justice. I feel like we have a deeper responsibility than a gen pop dating app to the community that we serve. Last year with the resurgence of Black Lives Matter, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, countless others, Ahmaud Aubrey, all the other companies who saw standing in solidarity with the Black community, but no, we are the ones who've been standing. With that being said, we thought, well, we're a dating app still. And in that, we, we really needed to find the right role to talk about vaccines in the community. Literally, it was a deck over a hundred pages and there was one slide about Vax that thing up on like the second to last page of the deck. And we thought this idea of like, what if we remade this cult classic, an important song in the black community that everyone knows within the first few beats of the song and we made it into Vax That Thing Up. And we're like, hmm, that could be interesting. So we sat on it, um, let the executive team see it. And like literally three days later, we were like, let's let's pull the trigger on this. Before I license any of my music out, you know, I'm kind of cautious about, is this something that I believe in? And I kind of felt like, with the black community, like we 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 not getting the message. So why not music? Why not something like that? I knew first thought offhand it was gonna be some backlash for it as well. It was gonna be good and bad. Especially with with a topic like this, you know, there's you know who do we offend? Who do we not offend? So there were a couple of like elements that we had to really think about um, in even pursuing the final creative. For us, you know, the original vision probably was a little bit more in the vein of a Saturday Night Live sketch. I think as we went down the path of taking it from, you know, a mock press release on a single slide uh, into an actual piece of content, you know, one rule that we try to follow is when you're parodying something, parody it as close to the original as possible um, so that people know and, and get the full effect of the source material. What was the pre-production process like? It was this kind of several week Rubik's Cube of um, figuring out multiple contracts and figuring out, um, you know, rights to the song, recreating the lyrics and all of the legal implications of that. First thing they wanted to do, we went through a whole bunch of artists like you know, and I was just like, nah, it's gotta be something iconic to our city. What we learned uh, from Juvenile and from Manny Fresh, which we didn't know going in, New Orleans was hit particularly hard by COVID. And so this was a issue that was very close to both artists' heart. As we started to approach the actual record date in New Orleans at Trombone Shorty Studios, the third artist was still missing. We know we wanted a female artist. I started throwing out a few names and I threw out Mia X and Manny kind of just almost across the room was like, oh, Mia? Hold on. 
He gets on the phone, calls Mia. Without second guessing, Mia was like, I'm in. And within five minutes, Mia was at, at the studio. If you wanna get sticky and hot, go, 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 a go, get the shot. If you wanna smash some dude named Scott, go, 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 a go, get the shot. The way the lyrics came together, the first verse, it kind of flowed naturally. And then Juvenile essentially kind of came in and took it from an 8.5 to a 10. The second verse was incredibly collaborative with Manny Fresh and there were several versions of it. Now the third verse, for us, this became a, a perfect kind of opportunity to create the rallying cry to go and get the shot and be incredibly overt with that message. Okay, what rhymes with shot? Eventually kind of threw out like, man, what if it was just about hooking up with some dude named Scott? I'm like, I think that's actually it. When we saw it start to come together with the lyrics, I was like, just, you know, let's, let's do what we can do here. Let's make it, let's do our job, which is to make an authentic rap video and bring that, their vision to life. So now here it is, we get to work with the artists that we grew up watching that motivated us to be in this industry. It was definitely nostalgic. I love that they did the shots iconic to the way it was. Like making it rain with the Vax cards. It's a classic visual of hip hop in that time period. We wanted to make sure that we hit on those points of touching on the original video. So just scouting uh, parks, we were like, oh, West End Park, this is perfect. It has that overhang over the basketball court, which is what they had in the original video. Even on set, you know, Juvenile was like, this is gonna be funny, man. People are gonna love this. Juvie turned to me and said, you think we should just like, maybe shoot the, the old one again? This really feel like the, the you know, the video, like the, the first way we did it. We definitely made sure that you know, whatever we did, we, we had the elements in it, you know, so far as like the girls in the cage, the twerking, the fog, even the angles, the way we introduced them, the way we, we framed them up, was making sure that they were larger than life because that's how we saw them anyway. These are legends and icons. Looking at the whole thing, like BLK being an app of connection, this is the first time in history, music history, that no limit record artists have officially collaborated with cash money record artists ever. Them all together in that one master shot where we're circling them, and that was like <laughs> what we ended on, and it ended on such a high note. In that moment, I realized I was like, Mia well, represents no limit. Like, wow. Like, so yeah, this is iconic. By the time we finished, it looked like the original video. Like it was just people who who found out we was out there and it was a whole park full of people. It ended up almost being a block party. That was definitely a party. And then, you know, from the post-production and then the release of it, it just like blew up. Overall, between social media, broadcast, we saw over 6.8 billion media impressions. It was on TV, the Today Show, CNN. It was everywhere. I think we knew that industry-wide, this was gonna be something that was gonna be of conversation and also in culture, because that was the intention. So, so we hoped for that. But I was shocked by some of the tweets by celebrities. For John Legend to say that it's the song of the summer, that was amazing. Medical professionals, health professionals, they were retweeting it and supporting it. We even saw people commenting saying that because of this video and this song, they are gonna get vaccinated. So we did change some minds, so that's always good.